Hands up, lift your hands high if you know that you're free. You're free. Lift your life clean, cause you've been redeemed. redeemed. No compromise and place in the king. On a shame, Romans 1 16. believe 
that I am blessed to be a blessing. But if you're in a position to receive it, you can't have it. You can't stop my harvest. So the scripture goes on and says, the kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seeds. You must understand that seed is you. In other words, God said that he planted you for good. In other words, God said, whatever you went through, all the challenges that you dealt with, your upbringing, you weren't raised in a, a, a two-parent home. You were raised in a single-family home. Uh, you you in a blended family. All that. But Jesus was in a blended family. Uh, 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 truth be told. So, so don't think it's strange when your life seemed to be off-centered because Jesus' life was a little off-centered based on family. So, so God is saying that, that, that he didn't just plant a seed. He didn't just put you in the ground. He said he put good seed. A uh, Good is simply a word that derives from God. Good is short for God. So you must understand if God chose you, if God handpicked you, if God chose to plant you, then God is in control of you and ain't no devil in hell can stop God's blessing. Yeah. Yeah. So he says he planted the seed in his field. He said, but that night while the workers slept. Mm. See, isn't it funny that when you get depressed and when things ain't going right, for some reason you always get sleepy. And it's just amazing that when the bills can't get paid, you think that sleep is going to take it away, that you're going to wake up and poof, bills are paid. But I'm here to tell you, we have slept too long. The church has slept too long. You have slept too long. You can stay up all night to get turned up because it's like turned down for what? But when problems happen in your life, it seems like you want to give up on God and also you want to sleep your problems away. But truth be told, your problems will never leave. Your perspective of your problem is what needs to change. Problems don't move God. Your pity party don't move God. Your tears don't move God. What moved God is your perspective that God is in control yeah. and that no matter what's going on in your life, that God wants you blessed because he called you blessed. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm preaching already. I almost want to close the message. But I got to keep on going because you can't stop my harvest. So while the workers slept, an enemy came and planted weed. Now, now, I'm sitting here looking at this Picasso from a spiritual perspective. And I'm sitting there saying, okay, if this farmer planted good seed in the ground, and while uh, the workers slept, it says that the enemy Kittrick came in and planted weeds. Well, I have a problem with this message and this aspect. I, I, I recognize that a seed is real small, right? And, and a seed, you have, to, you have to dig down and put it in the ground. And now, now it says the enemy came in and planted weeds. It didn't say seeds. So the enemy is trying to plant something that's already grown in your life to block what God's trying to grow in your life. The enemy putting full-grown weeds. In other words, I tell you all this. The reason why the enemy has a problem with you is because you used to ride with him. You were his partner. You was his road dog. You was his ride or die. You smoked with him. You drank with him. You sex with him. You lied with him. You stole with him. You did all you had to do with him. Now you choked him. Turn around and be on God's side and think he's about to bounce. No, he ain't get ready to leave you. He loves you too much. He, he knows how good you taste. I already know when enemies come after me because all this is good. I'm all good. Because I'm all God. You can't stop my heart. So, so the enemy comes in while we sleep. The Bible says plant it. Weeds. Bring up my past. You, you don't plant it. Homosexuality. You don't plant it lying. You don't plant it stealing. You don't plant it all that repossession. You don't plant it all that in my field. But the Bible said, then he, then he went ghost. He, he, he bounced. See, that's how the enemy is. The enemy loves to put stuff in the way of where God's trying to bless you. Then he leaves out the way. Leaves all your junk there. It's kind of like, you know, how, how, how people get, get kicked out of the park. They, they put all your stuff outside. And, but then they leave, they just put all your stuff out. See, the enemy wants to lock you out of your blessing. Come on. Come on. But you can't stop my harvest. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't stop my harvest. So the weeds, represent, represent, uh, the, re the weeds represent the problems in your life. Uh, and, and it says among the wheat, which is the blessings. So in other words, God plant good seed, which is the wheat. We are wheat. In other words, God, you have to summarize yourself as the wheat. In other words, wheat grows and, and wheat grows and grows and grows. And, and you got to understand that, that wheat don't change just because problems came in. Okay. Just because you 
change your lifestyle to serve God, your name didn't change. Okay, Dion, let me talk to, let me talk to Deacon Dion. Uh, Dion, I, I want to talk to you. I'm going to put you on publicity on YouTube. I'm gonna, they're going to know your name. Coach Dion Paul right here. The Paul family. They got it all. They're the Pauls. And, and, and I want to ask you a question, my brother. When you was in the world doing your dirt, I mean, I know you're supposed to be in church. You was in church on Thursday night and Friday night. But I'm talking about when there wasn't nobody looking. You know you're getting your steak and drink on your smoke and coke. I mean, doing your thing. I ain't telling it all, but I just want to tell a little bit. My question is this. Your name was Dion back then. When you decided to serve God and truly live for God, what's your new name now? Dion. So your name is the same regardless of the situation you went through. So if God said you were going to be blessed, if God said that you were blessed and you were his child, and he's so good to see, no matter what problems go on around you, you're still blessed. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Your name ain't changed. You're still a child of God, a child of the most high God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Woo, I'm preaching better than you said. Amen. And then the word goes on and says, when the crop began to grow, in other words, when the wheat started growing, you know, you know, got saved, you ready to live for God, now you, you're showing, showing a glimpse of and, 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 uh, uh, growing up in God, and, and, and you start to, to put down the, the, the drink you're drinking, and now you, you know, you, you just sipping on a little, little, you know, just a little bit now. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't drinking all the Vanik and, and the Cavassier and, and the Crown Roll and the, and the Picardi, you know, Malibu rum, not because y'all think you're down at the beach. I mean, you ain't doing that no more. You know, you done brought it down. I mean, you ain't smoking, you know, getting purple haze in your lungs. You decided that you want to get right before God. And then what happens, it says, when you begin to grow because you're ready to put those things away, it says you begin to grow and produce grains, says the wheat, the weeds also grew. Yeah. Ain't it funny that when you start producing for God, problems start growing? Oh, wow. Wow. Every time you choose to produce and say, I ain't doing that no more, I'm wow. turning away from that, I'm going to get myself together, all of a sudden problems grow at the same time. The same time you're growing spiritually, it seems like your flesh wants to grow too. Wow. Oh, but you can't stop. My heart says this is funny. It says the farmer's worker saw this, went back to the farmer and said, hold up. I'm going to paraphrase. Can I do it, Pastor Kenneth, right now? Can I do this, Pastor Katie, right now? Right now, I want to I come off the scripture. I'm going to give you scripture. I'm going to give it to you in my verbiage. Uh, the farmer, you know, was out there, and, and, and little Bud Bud came to him and said, look, man, said, uh, now I noticed I was out there doing all this work, and you gave me, the, you know, this good seed to plant. And I planted this good seed in the ground. You, you told me that it was good seed. You told me that this seed was guaranteed to reap a huge harvest. And now I'm looking out there in the field, you know, after I done woke up because I was tired and you know, I did all that work. I know I was sleeping, but you know, I was tired. You know, my flesh was weak. And, and now I'm noticing that not only is the, is, is the wheat that you promised was good growing up, I see that it's full of weeds. Where are all these weeds come from? I didn't put them out there. I didn't put my business out there. Yes, you did. You know, on Facebook. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> How they know my business? Because you publicize it. You on Facebook turned out. You on Facebook putting your business out. Then you wonder why the word is spread all around. You think you secret, you know, secretly doing stuff? Because that person that's your friend on Facebook ain't your friend on Instagram and ain't your friend on Vine and ain't your friend on Snapchat. So you think you Snapchat, but don't realize Snapchat is going to get you locked up on Facebook because you're going to be exposed. You know what? If you got that much sense to try to manipulate the system and choose which one to be on, you don't think God is talking to you and telling you to turn away from that stuff?
Just because y'all grew up in the same field don't mean that y'all grew under the same fertilization. Some have been fertilized with other stuff. <laughs> some of the best fertilizer. Amen. Read for you. Some of y'all can go to work tomorrow. We don't fertilize it. You'll catch it on your drive down at night. You'll catch it. <laughs> right. So he said, where did it come from? He said, enemy did it. So he says, he says, so being an enemy did it, and I see that the blessings are there, but I know it's all these weeds. Should I pull it? Should I, should I pull these weeds? Because it looks like the weeds are taking, uh, 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 I guess I should say, food or taking nourishment from the weeds. And, and, and the farmer said, no, don't, don't pull them yet. Don't, don't pull them. Because if you pull the weeds, the weeds are attached so close to the wheat that the wheat's going to get pulled up too. Yeah. Yeah. He said, no, no, wait a minute. Pump your brakes. Let them grow together. He says, let them grow together, not just grow together, until the harvest. Here's a big problem that we all have. We think because we're producing, we're harvesting. Producing and harvest is two different things. A lot of times we get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and we all of a sudden on fire for God. Oh, you ripe and ready now. You done turned from the world. You got it down pat. You done went and got you a Bible. You done went and got you a concordance. You done uploaded stuff on your phone. You done took down your selfie. You got Jesus' pictures hanging on the cross. I mean, you saved now. You done went all out. Got you the cross. Got you the necklace hanging down. You got the bracelet. Got the sickness ring. I mean, you just, you just do it then big for the Lord. And all of a sudden you think that you can go back to where you came from because you feel you empowered from God. Well, just because you're producing don't mean you're ready to receive a harvest. If you notice, the weeds, the weeds and the wheat have both grown up together. And God, the farmer, simply said, do not pull them both until the harvest. Some of you are not ready to receive what God has for you yet. You need to wait for a little while. You don't put a cake in the oven, let it stay in there for five minutes, and think it's done just because the outside is brown. The inside will be gooey and messed up and taste nasty. Karen's a baker, average baker, like myself. And, and you know, when we know that we, if we put together a nice pound cake, might do a lemon pound cake. You know, we do all kinds of kinds. I mean, I've done, I've done cranberry. I done did boysenberry. berries. I did marionberry pound cake. I mean, I done did it all. <laughs> you know, a marionberry pound cake is the one that get real high. <laughs> so, so you recognize that a pound cake because of the ingredients you put together. If you put it in the oven, West, you mix all the ingredients, you can do all the right stuff, right? Put it all together. You can beat it and, and mix it up. Make sure it's smooth. You can you, you, you coat your pan. You know, some of y'all eat cooks. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Stay with me for a little while. You know, some of y'all, you know, some of y'all, our best friend is Jack in the Box. Y'all like that, 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 you know, that company. But anyway, you mix it all together. You pour it in this dish. You can put it in the oven. Have the temperature exactly right. Put it in there. Peek inside there. Outside it looks brown. Nice. Look like, wow, this thing is golden tan. It's ready to come out. You pull it out, and all of a sudden, you cut that puppy open, and the inside of it ain't ready. That's why you can't be so dressed up that you messed up. Looking good on the outside, but your inside ain't done. And you're trying to get harvest stuff from God, and God said, I'm still producing it. I need you to stay in the fire a little while longer. A lot of us don't want to sit in the fire too long. We get a little hot. You know, we get you know, uncomfortable. But let me tell you yeah. something. If you stand there at the time that God says, when you come out, there's always rest. Hold on. Wow. Whenever you cook, y'all can tell I'm a Food Network junkie. 
do. So the Bible says, catch one in the fire. Fully clearly, the guy that was watching through the little window looked through that surrender and said, I know for a fact I put three people up in there. I remember Shadrach, Meshach, the bad Nico, that was in there, I put them in. But I see a fourth man in the fire, and it looks like the Son of God. Well, my question when I look at that picture is, how do you know how the Son of God looks? What they saw was that they were walking through this fire, fully clothed, walking around like ain't no problems, ain't no issue going on. Their clothes weren't burnt. They was walking around still praising God. They saw the blessing on them. So God said, when you go through the fire, you're not in there by yourself. Walk around like you know who you are. Get you some fire. Get some pep in your step. Straighten your back out. Lift your head up and know that you're a child of God. You can't stop my heart. Sometimes you gotta put your hand on your head. It ain't nothing funny about it. I ain't got no sugar up in me. I ain't, trust me, I ain't got cold. Ain't nothing funny about this, baby. Sometimes as a man, you gotta put your hand on your hip. Dip, dip low, do whatever you gotta do. You know who you are. The Bible says you can mount up a wing like an eagle. Get your eagle on. Come 
the church, singing in the choir. You can sing high notes and live low lives. You're still on the assembly line. Parts of you haven't been put together. You haven't been fully fabricated. They ain't time to reap your harvest yet. Your harvest is there, but you gotta wait. Sometimes we're not patient enough. This generation nowadays, and it's just, and I hate to keep saying this generation because the old folks, we do it too. We done got comfortable with the microwave. One of them quick and in a hurry. Microwaving turkeys. <laughs> Put it on five minutes and wait for another five. And you're just still going on. That's just silly. Because we don't want to put in the work required to get the right flavoring for what we're trying to do. A lot of us are so quick to try to get this from God, and God said, You ain't put in the work yet. Faith without works. Your salvation is sealed, but your harvest can't come until you put in some work. Yeah, you can't work for your salvation. Salvation is free. But if you want to be blessed and walk in the abundance of God, then you got to do some work. You got to change who you hang with. You got to change these bad influences around you. You know you're weak. Why do you do them? Seriously, how can you know you're weak in your flesh? But you hang around with a Chippendale dancer. That's really smart. <laughs> you know you got an eating problem. But you keep going, justifying going to the all you eat buffet because it's only $4.99. You can't control yourself. We all know what our weaknesses are. Your weaknesses will stop you from producing for God in order to receive the harvest God has for you. Can't stop my heart. I know I messed up yesterday. You can't stop my heart. I know I messed up. I'm going to cut somebody off. Right? I asked for repentance. Moving on. I still got stuff for me. God's trying to make. I'm still productive. You can't stop my heart. I heard you because yes, you did. I preached the message years ago. I almost want to preach it again. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yeah, I, I saw you doing that. Amen. Yeah. But you, you a trip, man. Yeah. You, you lied up there. Yeah. Yeah, keep going, come on, man. What else did I do? Tell me everything. Because I, I, I don't want to forget nothing. Because I want to make sure that I repent to God so I can produce for God and receive my heart. Why are you waiting to bring up back to me yeah. what I did? You can listen out on your own. Get over to your own field.
put you back down if you try to pluck the weeds yourself and pull stuff up and all this stuff. But you want to be able to wait and, and truly grow to maturity in God so you can receive the harvest from God. If that's you this morning, rest of your feet, I want to pray for you. That God will give you the patience.